I'm here with John Paletke. We're having an event here at the Ga uh, Gallimore uh, Center. And uh, what's, it, what's the, the name of this event? Okay, um, Beyond Parkland, a community dis discussion. What is the goal of this event? The goal is, this is the fifth of what we call our intergenerational sessions, where we bring together high school students, college students, uh, people my age, and people in between, some people believe are not older than I am, and to talk about um, our attitudes toward different social issues. We had one intergenerational on um, the environment. Uh, we had one uh, on the pursuit of justice and equality. That was last year at um, the Lincolnville Museum and Cultural Center. Uh, and this one is uh, discussing uh, gun violence and violence generally in school, uh, what can be done about it. We because, had, it's, uh, because it's the, the anniversary yes. of the Parkland shooting. Yes, it's one year and one day. Wow, one year and one day. One day uh, after the uh, Parkland shooting at uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Uh, and uh, when I, we talked to the high school kids particularly, what they wanted to focus on, and almost unanimously they wanted to talk about gun, gun violence. Gun violence. And, um, yeah. and uh, as you heard, uh, Patrick Canan, the school board member, I went through uh, what the St. John's County School District is uh, doing about it, certain uh, you know, actions that they've uh, completed and uh, uh, programs that they've, uh, they've done. Because it's not just safety, you know, and uh, it's not just, uh, you know, girding up the schools, which of course is part of it, but it's also dealing with students' uh, emotional issues, uh, which you know, obviously there's a lot of, we've been uh, talking about adolescents, and um, you know, talking about preventative measures, as well as just locking, the, or, you know, keeping the building safe, which is, I guess, job number one, but you also have to search for some longer term solutions. So that's basically what they're talking about, what can be done beyond uh, locking down schools um, uh, to help prevent uh, these kind of incidents happen in the future. The students are the ones who are driving this event. It's really right here. Um, you know, when I was coming here tonight, uh, and then when I read the, the messages, it reminded me that I was in Colorado uh, when Columbine happened, which was 20 years ago. And the fact that I had forgotten told me a lot that we're, we're becoming numb. You know, it's all numbers. It's things that we hear every day. And I think it's these kinds of conversations that can move the needle on this horrific slaughter that happens regularly. Um, and I've said before uh, that when I was thinking about running for school board, because I have another job being a lawyer, but when I was thinking, I never thought that when I was on the school board, I'd be thinking or talking or making decisions about how to protect kids from other kids with AK-47s. It just never crossed my mind. And maybe it should, but obviously, um, Parkland has cemented, I think, in all of our minds. As far as my own personal global perspective and the whole idea that the way to protect kids in our schools is to enter more guns and to arm the, the teachers. I don't personally believe in that. And I just don't. I think you know, there's, there's, there's such a gun problem in this country, it makes no sense to me to solve the problem by more guns. But I will say, there, as you all know, there are differences of opinion on that. Now, thus far, our school district and the board specifically has been pretty consistent that we are not uh, agreeing and we have not accepted funds for the Guardian program, which is arming the teachers. Thanks to Paul, I have a nice list here um, of, of things that have happened in our district since Parkland. It starts with a collaboration between the district and the sheriff's office to complete a risk assessment on all school, schools using the Florida Safe Schools Assessment Tool, creating a joint school safety work group with the Sheriff's Department to focus on procedures and drills, safety and security, training, communications, and on actually legislation as well. Create a district-wide school site safety standards addressing the facilities, 
and the day-to-day -day operations for all building principles. All schools and districts have completed emergency operation plans prior to the start of the 2018 year. All schools and district buildings were successfully uh, completed 800 megahertz radio checks to make sure there was two-way communication between law enforcement and the district. Facility safety enhancement, enhancements, including fencing, single point of entry projects, and I think there was, we spent and allocated about $5 million towards increased security cameras, I think at 24 schools, upgrading the alarm system at Fruco, upgrading the intercom systems around the district, adding fencing at nine schools, exterior lighting at Sebastian Middle, and making sure that we had the zone our school bus tracking on all the school buses. Also, the faculty and administration have completed an active shooter assailant response training. The students have completed an active shooter assailant response training facilitated by the Sheriff's Department. All schools have established a threat assessment team. So again, in all 40 of our schools, are we at 40? I'm sure, 40. It changes all the time, so I check myself. The administration, and this is a, a different piece of this, but it's such an important piece and something that I think Mr. Forson and the district uh, has been uh, really focusing on, and that is to the, the administration and staff at both the district office and the school sites are being trained in youth mental health first aid. Because the school district has increased, as I just said, mental health personnel, there's an implementation of Fortify Florida, and that's an app that's, that allows for anyone, including students, family, staff, uh, to make anonymous um, reporting of suspicious activity. And so that goes to a database, and that's, and, and you know the goal is here, is, you know, we've we got a, a lot of uh, high school students here, and even college, but you're the, you're the ones that, you know, if there is a young person, and then so far, it seems like most of the, of the assailants have been. Uh, obviously, it doesn't have to be that. But you would be the ones on the front line because you will see the odd behavior and you know some bizarre uh, circumstances that maybe now you all, myself, and all of us in this room would be more likely to say to yourself, you know, is this the beginning of something? And should I do something about it? The school district has added an additional 14 school-based youth resource deputies and also has added 28 armed security officers. And that was all part of the law that came out of the department. Uh, the district was required to put an armed guard in each of the schools. And again, that was not totally funded. There was some money for it. Um, but it was hard to turn to the sheriff and say, hey, we need, you know, another 20, 30 deputies in the schools, because that wasn't part of their budget either. So we were able to work together as a community, and we were able to find some money to hire these armed security officers and make sure that we were following the law. So that's, that's a, a, I guess, a, a sort of a summary of what's been happening. The fact that uh, there have been so many on school campuses is a particularly heinous and troubling facet of the gun violence epidemic that the United States has encountered. And the United States, compared to other, civil, other uh, wealthy nations, a child, a child or teenager is 36.5 times more likely to be killed by, by a gun. This year alone, 2019, 341 American children and teenagers have been killed by gun violence. And in, the, and in the past year after Parkland, we always hear never again, never again. But sadly, this hasn't been the reality. And in schools alone, there have been 31 incidents in the past year at K through 12 schools. Now that's not even including college campuses, of course, uh, we even know UNF not close, not too far from here has even been impacted recently.
And it was pretty different from the last one, I think, because we we, we really had a lot of disagreement in our group um, on like specifically talking about the responsibility of gun violence, who that should lay on. Some some of us here thought that it was the responsibility of students who were in schools and know what's going on and know who might be a problem. Whereas some of us in the group thought it is um, it, it's the responsibility of parents and teachers and and staff members. Um, we we didn't really come to a resolution. I, I almost wish we had longer to discuss. Um, yeah. Solutions, although uh, um, of course it's really hard. This this kind of solution. Um, so for our solutions, um, we came up with, we came up with the point that uh, we don't understand how someone could be so against a background check for guns. Um, we feel like if you are uh, someone who's responsible for the gun and knows how to use it, that you have nothing to fear about being checked on your background. There's nothing to fear. So if you are so against them, then what are you afraid of? That's one point. Changing the way we perceive guns as a, a trophy instead of something that can kill and be used dangerously. Um, we also believe that we should change the wording, change the conversation from um, gun control to gun safety because uh, the word gun control is advertised to sound kind of tyrannic, you know, like we're taking away your guns, we're the bad guys here, and people are really afraid. So we want to change the mindset of being afraid of the other person. It's really fear. And we also thought that it, was, it really comes back to the self. Um, um, we talked a lot about the fear that, because three of us here are all students and how every single day we have this in the back of our mind, a constant anxiety that today could be the day that someone decides to shoot up the school. And that's a very sad and harsh reality. Um, furthermore, we talked about how a lot of students don't know the measures being taken or that how they can report anonymously. Um, I know an app was mentioned None of us were aware of that. No, forcing students to have that one-on-one -on -one time with a guidance counselor so they can always keep tabs on people and to just have that awareness because I don't think it's a secret to anyone that a lot of this does derive from some mental health problem. I, I don't think anyone can really disagree there. So giving more of counseling opportunities. Um, I also think just having that will help students to release that fear, the fear of reporting, the fear of even going to school. Um, two students are with us, and both of them were very adamant in saying that uh, they don't feel safe around because they are an armed officer around the school. On the contrary, it stresses them out, and it's a constant reminder that there's danger out there. Is it true? Yeah, potentially it is. Now, I'd like to see some numbers. I don't have them, but, you know, really, statistically speaking, what are the chances of your school being attacked? else we, we discussed and it was interesting. I think anger, fear, whatever it is, mental illness, you call it, whatever you, you know, label you want to put on this. In every country in the world, everywhere, people are angry, afraid, um, mentally ill, whatever you want to call it. Educate yourselves. Go out there, see what can be done. Mostly education, education, stop being afraid. Fear comes from ignorance. Ignorance comes from lack of education. Work on this. It's a long-term goal, I know. Right now we have to deal with the immediate impact of that, arming up, blah, 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 whatever. Educate, educate, educate. One is that we need more intergenerational conversations like we're having tonight. Um, I think just talking to someone who's the same age as me, I don't get the same uh, viewpoint as someone who is older than me or younger than me, and I think we should have more of that. Um, we all came to the consensus that Teachers should not have guns, which we also talked about how polarized that society, that society has become, um, how just separated the left and the right have become, but this really isn't a left or a right issue. This is like a humanitarian issue. Like we and we do we do agree on a lot of the same things. What is it, 92% agree on background checks? 98 98% agree on background checks. Yeah. It's just, it's insane to me. Um, just a couple things very quickly. And one is just, uh, it's just a thank you. 
to, to all the students that were involved in this, not only being members, but being leaders. And uh, the, the reality is you're living it directly. We're living it secondarily, even as a superintendent, uh, even as district administration. We don't live in the midst of it every day as you do. And so it's really important, those of us that are baby boomers, we gotta listen to the generation that is enduring this uh, each and every day. And I just, I just want to say thank you. I thank you for having the courage to say it, saying what you need to say, and, and helping us to try to move forward. So that's all. I just, I just wanted to thank you for taking the time. And thanks for taking the seat.